Welcome to the Football Game Plan NFL All-32 Show, where we break down every game every week across the NFL. I am David Hassig, and with me is the czar of the playbook, Emery Hunt. Emery, scoring was at a premium this week. Dwayne Hassins gets his first W, and San Francisco's defense got better. I didn't think, even think that was possible. Yeah, it was good to see a lot of different things around the NFL in Week 12. Week 13 figures to be more of the same, more excitement, more chaos, like as we like to call it, especially when you're talking about guys coming back into the lineup that was mm -hmm. once starters and now going away and coming back. So we'll see on some quarterback situations. we got a lot to talk about this episode. And for more on Week 13, let's go to the four-minute offense. Jennifer Mariwenka here with your four-minute offense. Getting through another interesting weekend in the NFL. First, we have some serious pressure on head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, Jason Garrett. Is it the beginning of the end? With a loss to the New England Patriots during America's Game of the Week, team owner Jerry Jones has been very vocal about his frustrations with the 10-year head coach. Fans, along with owner Jerry Jones, wondered what kind of coaching was happening with the block punt that set up the only touchdown, courtesy of the New England Patriots in that first quarter. But this was far from Garrett's only misstep against the Patriots. With six minutes and eight seconds left in the fourth quarter and facing a fourth and seven from the Pats 11 yard line, Garrett chose to kick a 28 yard field goal rather than go to a game tying score. The Patriots showed their strength really does lie in their defense, ending this game with a 13-6 win. From the best defense in the league, we moved to possibly the best team in the league. It was nothing short of embarrassing. With their 37-8 win over Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers, the 49ers made their presence known and have their eyes set on the Super Bowl. Former Patriot Jimmy Garoppolo shone under the weight of primetime expectations and finished the game with the highest rating of his career, 145.8 on 14 of 20 passing for 253 yards, two touchdowns and no interceptions. Looking at the AFC West, it was Derek Carr who felt the shock of the Jets' 34-3 lead. Carr completed 15 of his 27 pass attempts for 127 yards and a pick along with an 11-yard scramble. In the third quarter, Mike Glennon was called to relieve Carr, but just added salt to the open wound, fumbling two of his first three snaps. This was a loss that stung deep as the Raiders prepared to face their division leader due to the outcome of this game, the Kansas City Chiefs. And finally, there's always time for a one more selfie. Recently named the official starting quarterback of the Washington Redskins, Dwayne Haskins led his team to a refreshing victory against the Detroit Lions in Week 12. It's been a while since Washington fans have felt a victory, 399 days to be precise. But this Sunday, that's just what they felt with their 19-16 win. However, it was not Dwayne Haskins who was there to seal the deal on this last snap with his team. Instead of being there to close the deal with his team, Backup QB Case Keenum had to be called in since no one could find Haskins. Turns out he was taking a selfie with some fans. And that wraps up your four-minute offense. I'm Jennifer Mariwaika, and I'll be seeing you next week. Now, usually we would take this time to talk about Week 13's Thursday night game. But the problem is that there are three games, and we've already done it. You'll have to check out Twitter, at FBall Game Plan, for those. So we thought we'd take a quick break, pause, and... For being Thanksgiving, we thought we would take a second to say what we're thankful to the NFL for in 2019. Emery, what are you thankful for? Lamar Jackson, and here's why. Let's go all the way back to when he was coming out of Louisville at the Combine. We have that interview, which you can check out on YouTube.com slash football game plan. At the Combine, where he was talking about what he wanted to do, what position he was going to play. Everyone was peppering him with positions. Uh, should you be a receiver? So you know the vitriol that was thrown his way during the draft process. He goes to Baltimore. People thought maybe he can be a little wildcat, you know, package or the Lamar Jackson package. And he finally gets in when they were four and five, leads them to a six and one record down the stretch, only losing to Kansas City on a miracle fourth down play by Patrick Mahomes. They get into the playoffs and they lose to the Los Angeles Chargers and everyone throwing vitriol his way, talking about see what happens when a team plays you again or they should have went to Flacco. So they poo pooed his rookie season, going to the offseason all spring. All summer, all you heard was about can Lamar throw, will he be able to throw. Last year was a fluke. Everybody has a full tape on him. Goes into the preseason. They're overanalyzing every incomplete pass he throws, even though he was efficient in the preseason, mm -hmm. which doesn't count. 
And so everyone then turned to, well, he's going to get hurt if he keeps running. He's going to get hurt. Fast forward to week one of the NFL season, gangbusters against Miami, gangbusters against Arizona. Then it switched from, well, those two teams don't count. you got to play some real NFL teams. And he just goes on and blasts the Patriots, the Seahawks, and also the Houston Texans. And now it's the, uh, they're giving him props for being an MVP. So I'm thankful for Lamar Jackson fighting through all that nonsense, all the haters, and all the people that's now loving him after those are the same folks that hated him prior to coming into the NFL. See, for me, it's the backup quarterback, the unsung heroes, the guys that have to learn all the defenses every week and then not have to do anything when facing them. But this year, it's been the year of the backup from Jacoby Brissett taking over in Indianapolis to Devlin Duck Hodges and Mason Rudolph in Pittsburgh. You've seen backups step forward and win a lot of football games this year in the NFL. So to those guys who think riding the bench is worth nothing and they're just earning a paycheck for sitting down, we've proven that they are wrong. Shout out to Ryan Fitzpatrick. In 2019. When we come back, we will break down all of the Week 13 action right here on the Football Game Plan NFL All-32 Show on the Game Plus Network. I'm Alex Marinoni, offering you Football Game Plan's best bets for Week 13. Out in Cincinnati, where the Bengals play host to the New York Jets. The Jets have been steamrolling their opponents as of late and have a favorable matchup with the winless Bengals team. But the Bengals are starting Andy Dalton again this week. Expect a close game here with a spread set at plus 4.5 for the Bengals. I like them to cover. We head to Indianapolis where the Colts will take on the Tennessee Titans. A huge AFC South battle for two teams currently tied for second in the division. This would be a close game that will probably come down to who has the ball last. I'm looking at the over-under in this game as well. And, and with it being at 43 and a half, I expect a low score here. The best bet would be to take that under. The struggling Philadelphia Eagles head to Miami to take on the Dolphins. Despite the confidence and fearlessness the Dolphins play with, I expect the Eagles should handle this game. With the spread set at minus eight, I like the Eagles to cover it. Tensions will be high as the Cleveland Browns head to Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers in the heavily anticipated rematch. Seeing the spread set at minus one and a half for the Browns, I like them to cover it. In Carolina, we have the Panthers hosting the Washington Redskins. Haskins and the Redskins got an exciting win last week against the Lions and look to build momentum after the win. The problem is they're playing a much better team on the road than the Panthers. Looking at the spread of minus 10 for Carolina, the best bet here would be for them to cover it. This was Football Game Plan's best bets for Week 13. I'm Alex Marinoni. Be sure to order your copy of the Go Go Offense by Coach Brennan Marion on footballgameplan.com slash go go offense. Coach Marion goes through the ins and outs of his explosive offense, one that's tearing up the college football field and putting a lot of points on the scoreboard. Again, you can order your copy at footballgameplan.com slash go go offense. Troy Anthony here, bringing you Football Game Plan's NFL Week 13 Best Bets. Kicking it off, we have San Fran taking on the Baltimore Ravens. I'm taking San Fran plus four here at minus 110. San Francisco trounced Green Bay this week. I look for them to keep it rolling. Up next, we have Green Bay headed to the Meadowlands to take over the New York Giants. I'm taking Green Bay on the money line here, minus 265. Like I said, they just got trounced by the Niners. I don't see them keeping this one a game with the New York Giants. Tampa Bay plus 100 on the money line at Jameis Winston at Jacksonville. Jameis Winston has plenty of turnovers this season, but he continues to ball out and throw for multiple touchdowns. The Los Angeles Rams head to take on division foe Arizona Cardinals. I like the Rams on the money line here at minus 190. Keeping it with divisional games, the Kansas City Chiefs are home versus the Oakland Raiders. Oakland Raiders, I don't know if they have enough firepower to keep up with the Chiefs. I'm taking the Chiefs at minus 400. That's a big money line. You might want to parlay that with something else. Staying in the AFC West, the Los Angeles Chargers are home against the Denver Broncos. I'm taking the Chargers on the money line here at minus 125. Yes, rookie quarterback Brandon Allen has been balling out for the Broncos, but Rivers has something to prove in this one. Next, we have the New England Patriots heading to the Houston Texans. Deshaun Watson is going to have something to say for New England, but I don't think it's going to be too much. So I'm going to take New England on the money line here at minus 182. And finally, in the Monday night matchup, we have the Minnesota Vikings heading to Seattle to take on the Seahawks. This is going to be a good one. A defensive battle, but two offenses that can put up a lot of points. I like Minnesota squeaking this one out, so I'm taking them on the money line at plus 130. Troy Anthony with your NFL Week 13 Best Bets. Welcome back to the NFL All 32 Show. Week 13 is already underway, but there's still plenty of action to come on Sunday and Monday. One this week that we don't have is bye weeks. The bye weeks are done for Finally. 2019. So we have a full slate of action, and our first game might be the best one of the week. San Francisco taking on Baltimore. 
differing styles at the quarterback position. Very good defenses on both sides. But who gets the W in this one? It's really weird to see San Francisco playing that 1 o'clock slot because we're normally seeing them at the 4 o'clock window or night because of them being on the West Coast. But they fly all the way out to Baltimore. Should be a great game. Both great defenses. And what a great way to start Week 13 on Sunday when you talk about San Francisco and how they're playing. Jimmy Garoppolo, I thought, played his best game against Green Bay and also against Arizona, especially inside the red zone and also on third downs. He's going to have to bring that Jimmy Garoppolo to the table against Baltimore. For Baltimore, we know their offense does a great job in running the football. They are complimentary in their passing game. Still big play passing game, in my opinion, and eventually they've gotten better since Marcus Peters got there, since LJ Fort became a part of their football team. So they've done a good job in, in building around uh, that defense and making that defense better with their secondary. I think their secondary matches up well against the passing game of San Francisco, and I think defensively they're pound for pound, one and the same as far as what they can do from a run defense standpoint. So all things being considered, I'm going with the X factor, Lamar Jackson. I like the Ravens. Athletic quarterback versus athletic defense in that one. Going to be interesting to see who comes out on top. Next up, the Redskins taking on the Panthers. Dwayne Haskins gets his first win, plus a selfie with a fan in last week's game. The Panthers struggled, but still put up some good offensive numbers against a New Orleans Saints defense that's been struggling. Who gets the win in this one? This is going to be an uh, interesting game because you look up front. I think Dwayne Haskins can have success in the passing game because of a the familiarity with both uh, Calvin Harmon, who he threw, in the threw the football with all throughout the preseason, and also with uh, Terry McLaurin, his teammate at Ohio State. So I think they can have success in the passing game. I worry about their run game against Carolina. And on the Panther side of things, I worry about – Kyle Allen, how he'll do against this aggressive Redskins front. So that's going to be the biggest matchup. I think we will see a game that looks very similar to Detroit, but I do think the Panthers get the win against Washington. Huge pressure on Dwayne Haskins to perform right now in Washington. Next up, the Jets taking on the Bengals. The Jets have a lot of momentum. They've scored 30-plus points in the last three games. The Bengals took the Steelers to the brink, but still have that zero in the win column. This will be a tough test for them, though, against the Jets team that's clicking. Well, if the Bengals would have started Andy Dalton, maybe they beat Pittsburgh in that ball game because I didn't think they played terribly. I've been saying this all season long. Yes, they are an 0-11 team, but to me, they're more of a 4-6 type team. I think mm. they've played well enough in four games to win. Now Andy Dalton goes back into the starting lineup, so we should see some more continuity within that offense. Look for more points on that end. But the Jets' defense has played really well the last three games. Offensively, 30 points in each of those three games. All victories, their offense is looking like it's firing on all cylinders. And he still don't even have the running game to match. The passing game has been the calling card, and the offensive line has done a better job of protecting Sam Darnold. I think there are a lot of good things going on right now in Florham Park. I'm going with the Jets to go out there to the Queen City and get the win. Huge game for the Jets for sure. Next one, the Titans taking on the Colts. A huge divisional matchup. The Titans have won four of their last five. Ryan Tannehill seems to be the formula that has gotten them the win. The Colts, Jacoby Brissett struggled in his last game, and there's already criticism coming down on him. Yeah, you talk about the Titans first. When you look at what Ryan Tannehill has done, he's playing a dual-threat game. He's doing a better job of being Marcus Mariota within his offense. So you like how he's playing. He's playing himself into a long-term job with Tennessee. Running game is there with Derrick Henry. Defensively, they're doing a great job of turning the ball over. The Colts' defense is excellent as well. They're very good versus the run. I love what they do in the secondary and taking the ball away and playing matchup defense. Their run game is going to be questionable. Although Jonathan Williams has back-to-back 100-yard -back games, Jacoby Brissett, I think, can do a better job of getting the football out quicker. But T.Y. Hilton has to catch the football. He catches those two passes against Houston. Maybe they win that ball game. But I do think this one will be down to the wire, probably the second-best game of the weekend. I like Indy. Interesting to see what Jacoby Brissett does with that criticism as well. Next up, the Bucks taking on the Jags. When Tampa Bay doesn't turn the ball over, and more specifically when Jameis Winston doesn't turn the ball over, they are a good football team. We saw that last week. The Jags have struggled. They have a struggling defense as well. This might be a perfect game for Jameis Winston to take over and get another win. 4,000 yards passing, 32 touchdowns, 29 interceptions. It's what Jameis Winston is on pace for. Two 1,000-yard receivers. Jameis Winston is, you got to love him because you have to just know that you're going to get good Jameis and bad Jameis, sometimes in the same drive, sometimes in the same play. But Jameis Winston will not quit. If I were to ask you, who would you rather trust in this ball game, Jameis Winston or Nick Foles? You're probably going to go with Jameis Winston in that passing mm -hmm. game. Nick Foles hasn't been what they expected him to be coming back from injury. Their offense has struggled. I think that's going to be 
a, some, that's something that you're going to see continue. I like Tampa Bay to get a win. Jameis Winston, the ultimate Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde this season. Next up, one of the underrated value, uh, undervalued rivalries in the NFL, the Raiders taking on the Chiefs. Big loss of the Raiders last week against the Jets. The Chiefs, though, need this win to stay ahead of this Oakland side in the division. Crucial one at Arrowhead. I thought the Raiders overlooked the Jets last week, and they came out flat offensively. And when you look on paper at the Chiefs' defense, I think this defense is better. Be, the, the sum is better than the, the part. So however you say that saying, but I do like their individual pieces more so than what they're doing out there defensively. However, the way they close out that game against the Chargers, Going into a bye week, coming out of a bye week, Andy Reid is outstanding coming out of a bye week. I think the Raiders run into a buzzsaw here against KC. Although we do know the Chiefs' defense does struggle from time to time, so Oakland, if they want a rebound game, this be might be the one to have. And before we go to break, let's talk about the Eagles taking on the Dolphins. The Dolphins' defense looks shaky, and the Eagles need a defense like that right now because if the Cowboys win on Thanksgiving Day, which maybe they're expected to, Eagles have to win to keep pace. I like the Eagles in this ball game. I'm not going to even waste time in saying that this is a must win, but it definitely is a must win for Philadelphia. Offensively, I think they can do a good job of moving the football, but I think their defense will frustrate Ryan Fitzpatrick. I like Philly to get the win and put more pressure on the Cowboys. And a Cowboys team that is definitely looking shaky, though. They might have some troubles with Buffalo on Thursday night. After this short break, we will cover the later and primetime games of Week 13 here on the Game Plus Network. Stay with us. Welcome back, fans. Let's return to the Week 13 predictions. It's no secret that Daniel Jones was seen as overrated and has had some growing pains this season. He might get a masterclass, though, this week in coming back from adversity when he takes on Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. The Pack got swamped by San Francisco's defense this week. They've got a lot of injuries on the offensive line they're going to have to deal with against this Giants front seven. But do the Packers have enough? Yeah, I was about to say the Packers' offensive line got swamped by the 49ers' defensive front. So in order for that not to be the case against the Giants, they have to play better. It doesn't matter who's out there starting. You have to bring your A game. This is the NFL. And you can't allow the Giants' defense, which hasn't been known to rush the passer, have his best game against your offensive line. So they have to get better up front. Aaron Rodgers also has to play a little bit better as far as getting rid of the football and maybe working on a shorter passing game instead of trying to hit home runs everywhere. Maybe just lean on the ground game because they can run the football with their two talented True. tailbacks. The Giants, Daniel Jones has to stop turning the ball over. If he doesn't turn the ball over, he has shown the ability to move the football down the field in the passing game, and that could also help out Saquon Barkley, in my opinion. So Jones has to protect the football. The problem is that left side of the offensive line with Nate Solder going up against this pass rush with Zadarius Smith and all these other Preston Smith and all those guys coming off the edge. I like Green Bay's defense in this one over New York. And it's not even Daniel Jones in, in, in the interception category. It's the fumble it's the category. Fumbles that kill you. That's been a big problem for him. Moving on to the next one now, the Rams taking on the Cardinals. The Cardinals seem to have gotten better week to week, even if they don't get a W necessarily. The Rams, on the other hand, are looking for any kind of consistency passing the football. Defensively, they'd have been okay, but not tremendous. Could be a toss-up this one. Could be a toss-up, but when you look at what the Rams are on paper, very talented. You look at Arizona, talented offense, pieces of talent on defense. And I think the pieces of talent on defense – is the reason why they are where they are right now in the standing. So that's something that's going to have to improve. And they have to find a way to play consistent defense. I think offensively they're going to be able to have some success against the Rams, but I can't get away from the fact that the Rams are just too talented to lose to Arizona. I like the Rams. Going to be interesting to see how Kyler Murray does against that defense as well. Next up, the Chargers taking on the Broncos. Safe to say the under might be a best bet in this one. Neither offense has really clicked. Defensively, not bad for either side, but the question is, can we get any consistency from the Chargers at the quarterback position? Well, this, that's the biggest question because this is the part of the season where the Chargers that you've counted out will now turn it on and find a way to get into the playoffs and make something happen. So, yes, they have to find a way to turn it on and be consistent. Denver is still playing with a young quarterback. They're still trying to find ways to be consistent themselves. I love their receiving core. I think when you look at the matchup, though, the, car, uh, the Chargers have a better matchup, in my opinion. They can apply pressure which I think will frustrate Brandon Allen back there at quarterback. I like the Chargers to get back on a winning track. We go to our next matchup. Absolutely nothing happened between these two teams earlier in the year, between the Browns and the Steelers. But in all seriousness, there is going to be a lot of tension around this game in the Steel City. Mason Rudolph, we don't know if he's going to be the starter this week. They still have not named whether he will go or Devlin Hodges. For his sake, you almost hope that he's on the bench and let Hodges take over. But still expect a lot of hard hitting in this one. What you like about Pittsburgh's situation is the fact that one, their defense 
can help them out and help them win games. They're outstanding defensively. But on the offensive side, if you know your backup quarterback isn't afraid to come in at short notice and, and throw the football deep down the field, throw it anywhere on the field, we know that's Duck Hodges. We've covered him a lot down there at Sanford. Then you can play Mason Rudolph early, see if he gets out of his funk before pulling him and going back to Duck Hodges. So they have some options offensively, but they have to play better. The Browns, the best way to defeat that pressure that's going to come at them from the Pittsburgh Steelers, run right at it. And they have two dogs in the backfield in Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb is already over 1,000 yards. We've seen Kareem Hunt become Mr. Third Down for the Cleveland Browns. Odell Beckham Jr. got his first touchdown as a Brown. They're starting to get a lot more pieces involved in the passing game. Landry scored as well. Mayfield isn't turning the ball over at a high clip like he was earlier in the year. So much more balance coming from Cleveland. And quietly, Joe Schobert should be the starting tight end because all he does is yeah. catch interceptions. And so him defensively, I think, will be a big issue for the Steelers quarterbacks. I like the Browns to win this one as well. Let's move on to the Sunday night game. The Patriots taking on the Texans. It seems that nobody can figure out this New England defense except for Baltimore. But we know that Deshaun Watson has some good memories against New England. Another dual threat quarterback. That seems to be the Patriots' kryptonite. But can the offense click for New England enough to get the win here? Deshaun Watson has that same Jameis Winston mentality of no quit. Except he also protects the football, which is something Winston doesn't do. But when you look at what Watson does well is that he works touchdown to check down. So he's trying to hit you deep down the field. And they have some great weapons to do so in DeAndre Hopkins, Will Fuller, uh, Kenny Stills. They do a great job there as well. So I like what they bring offensively. We saw what this looked like before when they played as rookies, uh, Watson versus New England. He gave them fits in that defense that at the time had the, uh, Devin Clowney and J.J. Watt couldn't get off the field. I think the defense will be a big key here because you look at the Patriots trying to have success, trying to find their offense. Nikhil Harry's third game caught a touchdown last week against the Cowboys, but their offense just doesn't seem in sync. So maybe this is a game where the Texans' defense actually matches up well against New England's offense. I like Houston to win the game. If this turns into a shootout, definitely take Houston with the advantage there because New England hasn't been able to get the quick fire offense that we're used to seeing from them, especially in the second half. So if this turns into a track meet, advantage Houston. Let's move into the Monday night game, the Vikings taking on the Seahawks. You've got two quarterbacks that are in tremendous form going to this game, but you want to pay attention to the defense in this one. Because that's what it's going to be about. I think both defenses are excellent. Seattle's defense is getting back to that Boone's Day defense, I like to call it, where they just constantly hit you all day long. Vikings defense is the Vikings defense, so they've been excellent throughout the season. Kirk Cousins is playing his best football. I've seen him play in his career. Russell Wilson is an MVP candidate. Running game. Dalvin Cook, you could probably push him in the MVP conversation as well with how well he's playing this year, how critical he's been to team success. Chris Carson has to hold on to the football, but we know the Seahawks can run the ball. He's got a great game for Rashad Penny. So all of that being the case, I think it's going to come down to a last possession type of game. You look in the fourth quarter, who can you trust? Russell Wilson in any situation. I don't care if you're playing on the moon, if you're playing in Seattle, if you're playing in a pro, but don't doesn't matter. This dude has the it factor. I like him to get this game against the, the Vikings. The biggest thing with Kirk Cousins is he's gotten these wins kind of out of the spotlight of every Sunday. He hasn't really been in prime that time that much. Does he step up like he has sometimes in the past right. against Washington, or does he struggle like we've seen over the last couple of years? We'll only have to see on Monday night. That'll do it for the Football Game Plan NFL All-32 Show. Don't forget, for all your football knowledge, go to footballgameplan.com where football makes sense and go to SoundCloud or iTunes where you can listen to the NFL All-32 Podcast with myself, Emery, Alex Marinoni, and Troy Anthony talking about all the news and notes and all the buzz from across the NFL as we head down the home stretch of the 2019 season. For the Czar of the Playbook, Emery Hunt, I'm David Hassagan. Enjoy the Week 13 action, and thanks for watching.